So good morning students, I am Sanjay Tripathi, lecturer Sanjay Tripathi, lecturer in English and uh, this video is specially recorded to clear some doubts on data miners and uh, since most of you told me that uh, data miners is one of the most uh, tricky part in, the, in, in your grammar coverage of the syllabus and that's why I decided to make this video on data miners and uh, basically it's a very simple thing, uh, there's nothing to be uh, uh, afraid about while reading data miners because uh, when you know the rules of what these actual data miners do to a particular noun then it, it would be quite easy to go forward uh, with your lessons. So we'll uh, now start with uh, what particularly what are data miners. So this data miners actually means it, it is always related to a noun. A data miner is always related to a noun and it limits and uh, fixes certain boundaries of how a particular noun is to be used. It determines, that's why it is called a determiner. It limits or fixes the role of a noun in the usage, that is in its, in its uses, in a sentence. There's nothing that you would find that is unclear about what a determiner does. So this is basically what a determiner does. And these are the different five types of determiners. When we basically see the classification of determiners, the first kind is article, then, then possessive, demonstrative, numerals, and then comes the final one that is the quantitative. The most basic thing about a determiner is, is the usage of article because in any sentence you will 100% you will find the usage of, of an article. For example, take a sentence For I say, when I say the table or the blackboard that you can see or the whiteboard that is actually that you can see is fixed onto the board. When I take this sentence that the whiteboard is fixed onto the wall or is fixed on the wall it would not be used because I, and I have to go deep into teaching you some other words. the white board is fixed on the wall in this simple sentence you can see the usage of all the things that are required to use in a sentence have been done white board in this case would be the subject naturally is fixed on the wall would be the object fixed is the verb this is the auxiliary verb and this is the main verb this is the proposition and the wall is the object this is the subject then we are only left with this and this okay so what are these two? Basically they are a kind of determiner that is called articles. Okay. So what are articles then? We will go into it a bit later. Then first let me tell you these two are articles. Without the usage of this, the noun here, okay, the white board is also the noun. So the board would not get its, you know, due as how it is used in this sentence. The, it particularizes, okay, the always particularizes the noun. So when we come to articles, there are two types of articles. The first one is definite, the second one is indefinite. Definite articles is only of one type and it is called the. Indefinite articles are of two types, they are called a and an. The usage of a and an comes under indefinite and the usage of the comes under definite. So in this case, here, 
when we particularize the whiteboard, when we point at the whiteboard and say the whiteboard, we know which whiteboard we are talking about. That's why this article is used, the, because it particularizes the noun. Similarly, when we talk about indefinite articles, there are two kinds of indefinite articles, a and an. In this case, a and an would not particularize a noun. When I say a book is kept on the table, or when I say an orange has fallen from the tree, we do not know which orange has fallen from the tree and which book is kept on the table. So there is uncertainty. about the fact whether or which orange has fallen from the tree or which book is kept on the table. That's why this is called indefinite. We do not know. It doesn't have a definition. That's, that's why it is called indefinite. And A, as we know, is always used before a uh, consonant. And AND is always used before. That is a natural thing before a vowel. That is the only difference between A and 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 the difference between definite and indefinite is definite particularizes whereas indefinite it does not particularize and we do not know about which object or which thing it is talking about. Now, this is articles, okay? This is one type. So, uh, what, what does basically article do? It particularizes or does not particularize a particular noun, okay? Then we come to the second part that is possessives. So what are possessives basically? Possessives indicate the possession of a noun. For example, a particular person or particular thing possesses something, then that can be indicated by a possessive. For example, let me rub this up. For example, we can say his wallet is empty. So naturally, we cannot use the pronoun first. There would be a sentence about it which would say Ram went to the market. to buy vegetables okay and then comes a second sentence that follows it it says his wallet is empty so now we cannot buy or that doesn't uh, uh, count here we have what I am trying to show you that this his is a possessive which is used for the noun noun that is Ram. So his wallet, from this possessive we get to know that what this wallet belongs to Ram. Okay? So it is Ram's wallet and that's why his is a possessive. There are certain other kinds of possessive like her, his, her, then uh, your or yours, whatever, then uh, my, mine, their, these are all possessives, which indicate the possession of the noun. So, we are clearly possessive also. Then we have certain kinds of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, this third kind of uh, determiner that is called demonstrative. Demonstra demonstrative is the most easiest kind of determiner because it demonstrates a particular object or a particular noun. So, when I say this table or that chair, I am indicating the noun by pointing a finger at it. So, when I say this table, this the table is near me. That's why this demonstrative, this is used. But when I say that chair, it must be far away or not at, if not far away, then not also near me. So, I will use that in that case. Okay. So, it demonstrates, the work of demonstrative is to particularly demonstrate a particular object. So, for example, this table is loaded with heavy objects and that chair is placed uh, right beside the inverter. So, this is uh, the use of demonstrators and then comes numerals. 
the fourth kind is numerals and numerals are nothing but when you uh, number a particular noun when I say how many nouns are there or how many things a noun can pertain to then we use numerals for example one student I think this is not visible so I will come down okay use this side one student completed the homework in time okay so here we know how many students that is one student the numeral always uh, points a finger at the number that the noun pertains to so one student similarly we can say Forty thieves accompanied Ali Baba to escape. Yes. Okay. So here we know how many thieves? Forty thieves. But then this is a simple usage of a numeral. Then we come to know that numerals are also divided into two types. The first type of numeral is called cardinal. Cardinal numbers. Then the second is ordinal. Okay, so cardinal and ordinal. So, what are cardinal numerals? Cardinal numerals are basically card numbers. You know, in ancient times, when uh, people used to, even now also, we see this uh, tradition has come uh, from ancient uh, culture when uh, we do not did not have a kind of uh, you know uh, paper or something then we used to uh, use any kind of leaf or something and um, uh, it, it, it was in the shape of a card okay and in that card a number would be inscribed okay so if six is inscribed in this card then it is a cardinal number so what are cardinal numbers Cardinal numbers in these days are generally used to teach students or children who, who are basically who have begun to learn uh, this number system. They teach them this uh, these numbers in a very fascinating way. They would just twist the tail of six like this, or if it is a three, they would twist its tail like this. If it is a two, it will be in the form of a serpent here. You know, they make it more uh, interesting for the children. So that is what they used to do and when these numbers were inscribed in this manner in a card it was called cardinal number okay so what are basically cardinal numbers these are numbers like one two three four five like this okay and then comes ordinal the word ordinal has come from the word order order means a particular sequencing okay when we talk about order and uh, ordinals then uh, it is uh, not written like this 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? When I say what is your order or what is your place or in which position you are placed in a particular line. I would say I am placed fourth or I am placed third. That the usage of this th or re like this and first f-i-r-s-t in this way ordinals are written. So it basically designates order of a particular person. So this is the basic difference between cardinals and ordinals. For example, when I say Ram has come first in his examination, then the word first, F-I-R-S-T, is ordinal. And when I say Ram has one number of pen left with him, then this one is basically cardinal. Okay, this is the basic difference between an ordinal and a card. And then we come to quantitative. Quantitative basically is a very bigger topic. Okay, it talks about how to quantify a particular noun. Okay, the quantity of a particular noun can be known with the usage of this determiner called quantitative. Like many, sorry, again, use this right. Like many. Much, okay, some, few, 
a few little a little so basically when we are quantifying a particular noun we use this uh, word called uh, determiners those are called quantitatives and when we say many or much here we are talking about the quantity of a particular thing okay in this case few can also be thing it can also be people little uh, mostly it is a thing related to thing and some is related to again people or some kind of things so when we so we need to know this this these things are quantitatives but the first thing that we need to do is we need to know the difference between how they are used for example many there is a difference between many and much okay many and much so when i'm differentiating between many and much i need to know how they can be used for example many is used when you can count something okay much you can also count but at the, at the same time it is more about uh, uh, in a particular unit okay it comes in a unit for example many we can say many students have attended the lecture but i cannot say much student have attended the lecture much usually denotes qualities and in some cases quantity but in the form of a unit for example i would say much water has flown from the bridge i would not say many water has flown from the bridge because water in its unit form that is droplet cannot be count okay that's why i would use much okay i cannot say many water i can say many books have been written on this topic because you can count those books separately you cannot count a droplet of water separately that's why much is used also in case of qualities like love hatred anger i would say i'm much angry as i was before or i'm much uh, cooler than i was before so it can denote quality much anger hatred love too much love is also you can use this sentence too much love is uh, not good for uh, you know uh, it's, it basically spoils children so too much love is not good for children basically spoils them it can be used in that sense and many can be used for countable nouns okay then there is a difference between some sorry there is a difference between few and little okay this is again the same thing few and little few would be used to again uh, used for things or nouns that can be counted and little for things that cannot be counted i would say there is little water left in the jar i cannot say there is few water left in the jar because you cannot again count water then there is another little difference between few and a few little and a little when i say i have few books left with me or when i say i have a few books left with me when i say a few books then it is always used as a positive thing and when i say few books left with me then i am denoting a negative sense for example i do not want to give you my books i would say i have few books with me because those books i need to um, uh, you know follow on a regular basis so can i teach my students so i cannot give those books to you but when i say i have a few books left with me that i am denoting it in a positive sense so that i can give you those books and the differentiation between little and a little is also like that when i say there is little water left in the jug i am saying in a negative sense that there is a very few or uh, many uh, in negligible sense that almost as good as nothing is left in the jar is another way to put it there is little water left in the jar then I, when i say a little water is left in the jar then i am using or denoting a positive sense when i want to say yes there is a little water for example a uh, hung a uh, very thirsty woman is uh, passing by the road and she uh, looks at me with beseeching eyes and says that i need some water then i would say yes i have a little water left with me you can have that water but when i say i have little water left with me then i do not want to part with that water i would say no i cannot give you i have little water left with me because i need it so when no is used it is used in a negative sense when yes is used in a similar way it is used in a positive sense so there is a difference between little and a little 
and there is a difference between few, a few, and a few and few. So I think uh, I guess most of the topics, uh, I think most of the part of data miners are covered. I'll later on also do a very uh, you know question-oriented um, lecture of this, where I will cover the usual questions that are asked in the examination related to data miners. So thank you, students. I think this was the first lecture. I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and uh, thanks. So welcome friends to our next next video lecture. This video lecture is basically based on voice change as you can see. I have drawn this table for your reference and uh, basically this part that is uh, voice change forms a very important aspect of uh, question setting pattern for examination in this diploma level because this is the most important uh, aspect to test students whether uh, they know how to change voice from one to another because it includes not only the knowledge of voice also but also the knowledge of tense it actually basically tests these two things so it is one of the most important aspect of your examination and uh, as we know we are changing voice in a sentence then first we need to know how a sentence is looked at particularly because without knowing the basics of a sentence you cannot change the voice as it includes certain techniques of uh, you know changes that we would see how tense would be changed and how subject would come to into the place of the object or in keeping all that in mind i'll first tell you about how to analyze a sentence before changing voice so let's take a simple sentence uh, say he is eating rice. When you take a sentence before changing in vo its voice, you need to see in which tensities, in which form of the tensities, and then you can affect the change after that. So here it is in uh, simple continuous tense. Okay. So sorry, present continuous tense. When it is in present continuous tense and we are going to change it, you know, from what? Active to passive because it is in active voice. Then we need to see the basic structure of this sentence. Here he is used as it is basically a sorry, I think you cannot see it there. I have to. Okay, here he is a pronoun used for a particular noun, for a particular boy or a man that is, a pronoun he is used. So he is eating rice. In this sentence, it is the subject, he is the subject, he is, is the auxiliary verb, eating is a main verb, and then a rice is your object. Okay, so this is a simple, sorry, present continuous tense. So, before changing the voice, we need to look at this sentence, he is eating rice. Now, we need to change this voice from active to passive, as it is an active uh, form, we need to change it to passive. So, he is eating rice. So, here what you will first, before effecting the change, first thing that you keep to, need to keep in mind is that the first rule of voice change is that the subject becomes the object and the object becomes the subject. So, here the subject is he. And when it is changed to be an object, it will also change its form. He will become him. Okay? And uh, rice, as you know, is in third person. So it will come back here and it will become your subject. So the answer would be rice is being eaten by him. What did I say? Rice is being eaten by him. See, here we are changing it from continuous. So, he is eating rice. He is eating rice. So, uh, this is uh, what? Simple continuous. So, rice is being, okay, it will be here, being eaten by him. Okay? Being is added. Got it? So, rice, the subject became, uh, the object became a subject and the subject became an object. 
so it just changed basically it reversed and the rice is being eaten third form of the verb third form of the verb eat is what eaten by him okay so this is how a word change is effective so it is in continuous tense now take present continuous now we will take a past continuous he was the same sentence now changing it just the you know the tense i'm making this was he was eating rice so if he was eating rice again being will be used and the verb form will be changed to third and it will be rice was being eaten the third form of the verb by him he will become him okay so basically if it is you then you would not change its form if it is you are eating rice then what will happen rice because rice becomes a subject so this is will be dictated by this rice and rice as we know is third you know it, it's actually uh, basically it's uh, in uh, the third person so rice is will remain common rice is being eaten by you i cannot say rice are being eaten by you because we are taking into consideration this auxiliary verb is completely dictated by third person and in third person it is always is rice is being eaten by you you would not be changed there similarly if we look at uh, you know uh, another in future tense i will say he will eat rice he will eat rice so it is in simple okay future simple he will eat rice then what will happen here passive is uh, uh, he will eat rice will not have any passive so if he will be eating rice is there again there will be no passive because continuous does not have and a simple will have this passive he will eat rice will come become your rice will be eaten by him he will eat rice will change into rice will be eaten by him again what i said this is the third form of the verb and a b would be introduced here and uh, this uh, he would become there come there and change uh, will be changed to him and rice will come here as uh, we are taking the place of the subject the object becomes subject and subject becomes object so this is a normal rule of voice change there's nothing to be afraid about and if you can remember this table it will be even more easier to change voices so as i said now uh, i was teaching you how active is changed into passive and passive will be changed into active then we first need to know then what is an active voice and what is a passive voice an active voice is always spoken directly but in the case of a passive voice it is not spoken directly it is uh, you know uh, 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 the voice is changed that is uh, the subject who was doing the object now the subject who was doing this work now this work will be done by the subject okay so this is what happens so it it is said in a particular voice uh, passive voice that's why it is called passive voice and this is the basics of active and passive and uh, the same same goes for past and present tense and future tense so we'll take some questions and uh, we'll see how it is actually happening Okay, it is a question basically posed 
to maybe the children because they are loving their parents do they or respect their parents so do they respect their parents it is an active voice this is a question signifier this is a question mark so do they respect their parents the passive will be are their parents respected by them now mark the change okay here do they respect their parents they is the subject respect okay and uh, parents here is an object so it will change basically parents is uh, in uh, plural so r will be introduced here it's indicating the number r their parents whose parents obviously the children's parents are their parents respect the verb changes to third the verb one changes to third respected by will be introduced so another major aspect of voice change is that by is introduced just to you know uh, make the voice passive by them i told you that another this uh, pronouns they change their form they becomes them so are their parents respected by them is the answer we'll take another question neeru does not i think that is the question neeru does not like singing does not like singing Neeru does not like singing. This is another uh, example, clear case of active voice because it is an active voice. You can see the subject does not like. It simply stated in a singular manner. Uh, you can see it is an active voice. Neeru does not like singing. So Neeru is the subject. Singing is the object. Basically, the first rule will apply. Object will become subject. Subject will become object. So singing does is there. Does not like. so what we will do singing is in continuous so singing is not like again the verb changes from 1 to 3 by me by is introduced and uh, the subject here basically shifts to the place of the object and subject becomes object object becomes subject singing is not like by me by is introduced so this is another now we'll change some passive voices into active voices we'll take some questions about that so this is a question the plants are being watered by sita the plants are being watered by sita here you can say you can see that uh, the doer of the work that is sita and the work that is done that is watering of plants and the object plants here has become a subject so it is an obvious case of passive voice so the plants are being watered by sita the doer of the work comes whenever the doer of the work comes uh, you know after uh, the work uh, or the thing that is being worked upon then we can say that it is in classic case of passive voice the plants are being watered by sita sita is watering the plants sita is watering the plants so here the work sorry the doer of the work comes again to the very beginning and uh, in the passive voice sita was you know uh, the object comes to the front and becomes the subject and uh, is watering the plants it is in present continuous tense that's why this being was used added as we had previously seen in the table that being was is always used when we are changing from present continuous tense sita is watering the plants 
is doing the work, the plants are being watered by seagulls. Simple thing. There's no, I do not think there should be any kind of doubt. You can basically ask me questions if this is wrong or if you have any doubt about it. So this is the basic of voice change. There's nothing difficult about it. Then uh, I wanted to take some more questions about it. Questions regarding this will uh, Okay, I think I will conclude that in a different lecture. Uh, I will include that in a different lecture. I, I would like to conclude this lecture. So these were certain questions regarding voice change. I hope there are no doubts. And if you are, you know, facing certain doubts, then you can directly contact me or you can uh, comment in the comment section. Thank you for this lecture. I hope you are doing well. Keep reading and uh, thanks.